Do you want distance, not just distance, XL distance? And do you want great durability as well as have an exceptional feel off the tee at a price point you can afford? If so, check out some of my other golf ball reviews. But if you'd like, stick around. I'm gonna review the Top Flight XL Distance. Hey guys, so welcome to Golf Ball Attic. Welcome back. Been on a little month hiatus. The holidays were crazy. Got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, but I wanted to get right back into these ball reviews and I thought no better way to start 2022 than reviewing a top flight golf ball. So this is actually my third top flight golf ball reviewed. I reviewed the bomb last year, uh, which I didn't like, but honestly it started a pretty interesting uh, war in the comments section. And then I also reviewed the hammer control, which I found to be, you know, an average to good ball. It actually performed a little better than I thought. Uh, so I just wanted to move right along and, and review an, another one to see how it performs as well before they come out with the new models. So with that being said, so this one right here is the top flight XL distance which if I'm being completely honest with you feels a little out of place when you look at what they have they essentially have the the hammer control which is more of the soft you know straight ball and then they have the hammer distance which is meant for a little bit more for distance and then they have the bomb which is like your really fast swingers and it's just meant to go straight and far and then you have the gamer which is the three piece um, you have a lot of options there so the XL distance I'm really not sure where it even comes into play on the spectrum after looking at kind of the marketing the back of the packaging it looks like this one specifically is supposed to be a lot of distance and a lot of durability but not really much feel and not much uh, spin per se, which is interesting because a lot of companies won't advertise that. Usually even if a ball is rock hard, they will advertise the heck out of the back saying soft feel, softest feel. But Top Flight, I do give them credit for that, says no, this golf ball ain't for that. This thing is hard and it is long. All right, so let's go ahead and start off the look of the golf ball. Top Flight's new logo is there, which I do like a lot. Just a basic logo, red lettering there. Uh, very, very basic on the side. You have an alignment tool, which leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, just an XL distance. You know, the arrows really don't do it for me there. It's, it's not very easy to line up your golf ball. Um, I don't like the size of the font either. It's just kind of boring. Um, you know, Top Flight really knocked it out of the park with that new logo, and I'd like them to, in the next models coming up, I'd like to see them, you know, experiment with the, the alignment tool a little bit more and maybe some of the, the font as well. Um, not that ultimately matters but you know it definitely is an aspect of the golf ball uh, let's go ahead and do some pitching and chipping and putting around the green and let's see how it feels around there so my overall view of, of the the chipping and the putting chipping it was very very firm so uh, top flight's marketing on the back definitely holds true to that um, it's very very clicky especially for a two-piece golf ball I don't think I've ever tested a two-piece that was so firm uh, maybe that's kind of what they were going for as a two-piece golf ball for people who love a firm feel which is pretty rare. That's a pretty niche market right there. Um, most guys who play a two-piece are gonna want a softer feel. That's not this one. It's definitely firm, tons of feedback, even honestly with chipping. When you hit it, even in the sweet spot, it does feel like it kind of tugs your, your club a little bit just because of how firm it is. And that could be also because I wasn't expecting it to be so firm, but it's definitely one of the firmer balls I've tested. Same thing with putting, it definitely feels firm. There's a loud click coming off the putter, but it does seem to spring off the putter like a two-piece golf ball would, which is a good thing. Uh, it's gonna help a lot of beginners as far as you know not having to come back as much, and it does hold true to that. So I wasn't expecting it with it being firm, I was expecting it to kind of hold back a little bit. And as far as checkup on the green, good luck. You're not really gonna get anything with this, and you know, like I said, on the back of the box it even says it, really low spin. I think it's meant to get the ball a little further, a little more distance, so around the greens you're just not going to get that tug or that checkup you're looking for. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into these numbers right now and see how the golf ball performed. Let's see if it can keep up. Uh, let's start with the seven iron spin, 6,236. Now that's a little more than normal, which is what I would expect for a two-piece golf ball. But honestly, I expect it to be a little lower since the golf ball is more firm and, and kind of promotes more distance and straightness. Um, so you might end up getting a little too much ballooning out of that, but ultimately it's not high enough to make a difference, I don't think. Ball speed 108, that's about average. Uh, right there in the middle of the pack, 107 to 109 is usually where I'm at, so 108's right in the middle. Everything is just kind of average, it looks like. All right, so with the five iron, this is definitely where that firm feel and uh, distance ball comes into play. As you can see, those numbers are pretty decent. Um, really good numbers there as far as the distance. I think that's in the top three of what I've tested so far. So honestly, really good there. Really like the numbers from the five iron a lot. If this continues on, I'll be very impressed as far as these numbers go. Let's move into the three hybrid, which is a 19 degree. 
and it kind of continues on the same path line with the, the the three hybrid one thing i did notice about it there and you'll see that down below is that it does launch pretty decently low uh, and because of the the higher spin number it did balloon up a little bit so i kind of offset it a little bit and that's why i was getting some pretty good distance numbers um yeah overall there that's just continuing like just what i saw from the seven iron i love it uh, and then now coming into the driver uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, and those driver numbers, honestly, guys, are pretty phenomenal. Uh, the only thing I can really see different about it compared to the other, the other balls I've tested recently is that uh, it had pretty much the lowest launch angle, and that could be a sign that maybe I'm just getting a little too much height under the golf ball. You know, a lot of these other balls I've tested were just slightly behind these numbers, and, you know, I, I had a pretty average, you know, from what I thought, 14 to 16 launch angle, but looking at this one, it was just over 13, as you can see, uh, but it actually helped my distance. Uh, the spin was 2,800 which is not the lowest I've tested. Um, it definitely isn't the lowest spinning golf ball for sure. It does still spin a little bit more than other golf balls. Uh, but when you get that kind of distance, who cares, you know? So I gotta say that's really impressive. All right, now getting into the durability. Now remember on the back, they said durability was fantastic and uh, they might have fibbed a little bit. So I'll be honest with you, this thing is tore up. Uh, if you can see there, those pictures, it is scraped. I mean, it is, it is ripped, it is torn. There's pieces all over the place. Feeling it feels like you're feeling sandpaper. I mean, it's taken all the cover off of it. Um, honestly, I mean, it, it's just so roughed up. Uh, my golf dot on the side there just did not make it at all. And that's I, the cover just feels so cheap. Um, I don't think this thing's gonna stick a green very well, to be honest with you. It, it has a very low ball flight, it seems like. And with, with no urethane on it and no, no covering that really feels like it would stick. I, I think it's going to be pretty tough to stick some greens. Um, I think really the purpose of this golf ball is something completely different, but uh, durability wise, probably one of the lowest scores. Uh, it's just so beat up. And this is after only about 60 to 70 shots. Uh, so it, it's disappointing in that regard. That means that it's really not even going to get you through maybe nine, 10 holes is the max of it. Uh, so which with a ball like this being as cheap as it is, most guys will probably only want it for that anyway. But Still, I expected I expected the numbers to be a little bit greater considering Top Flight said that was a main feature of this golf ball. All right, so I've ran the numbers, I've chipped, I've putted. So here's my overall recommendation of who this golf ball is for. This is kind of a tough one. I gotta be honest with you. It's like I said at the beginning of this video, this golf ball kind of is in a weird league of its own. It doesn't really fit in with the other ones. One thing I will say about it is the distance numbers are right there. I think that's where all the focus went in with this golf ball, making it go far, long ways, travel, um, but unfortunately, some of the other things it talked about having low spin, it wasn't the lowest spinning ball on the market I found, uh, even for a two-piece. I've, I've, I've hit even some three-pieces that spin a little bit less. Um, and I'm not just talking the driver, I'm talking with seven iron, I'm talking with you know all those regards. Um, so I don't think it does that at what it's supposed to do. It says it's supposed to have exceptional durability. It didn't, it was actually pretty abysmal. So I, I just don't think it really did what it was advertised. And when it comes down to it, I think there's a lot of golf balls that are honestly gonna be a little bit better for you. Um, they might be a little bit more in price because I'll be honest with you, most of the time you can get these golf balls two for 25 or two for 27. 12 to $15 a dozen is a great price point, but remember you're gonna get what you pay for. So I guess my recommendation is gonna be that if, if you really need some extra help on the distance, say you're playing a really long course and you have a slower swing speed or maybe even a mid swing speed and you just need help with the distance, you're not that good, you're gonna lose a lot of golf balls, Picking up a pack of these, that way you can just spray them all over the course and lose them is okay. But as far as making any improvements to your game and, and performing better and learning and growing your game, I don't really see a use for these. And also, I think that the firmness of this golf ball is really gonna turn a lot of people off. Uh, most people are playing a golf ball in the two-piece range for softness, feel, control. This thing is hard as a rock. Honestly, you know, I didn't mention it much when I was doing the, the, the club testing, but this thing, even off of, of your wedges and off of your five iron and three hybrid and driver, it feels hard. I mean, it's a very firm golf ball, which I think for a two piece, most people are probably gonna be turned away by it. At the end of the video, I will go ahead and put some recommendations for golf balls that are two piece and that, that are a little bit in this price range that might be better for growing your game. Um, but as always, guys, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching. Uh, remember, keep watching to keep saving, keep learning. Thanks, guys, so much.